Okay, welcome. My name is Teresa Flory, and I'm just get just started a little bit today. We're going to have some fun with you, uh, and we hope that you leave, as advertised, with a bushel basket full of information, things that you can really use in providing feedback. Uh, before we get started, we kind of need a, a really quick pre-assessment. How many of you teach in the Pathway program? Okay. And how many of you teach um, technology courses? I can see that yours is communication in the school of communication. What else do we have? Who else do we have here? Religion. 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 Nursing. And staff. Business management. Business management. Family history. Who's the business management? You two? I want to talk to you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I have a sudden business management. Hold on, right now. <laughs> um, so I'll introduce myself a little bit. I teach in Pathway, have been teaching in Pathway for three years. Does anyone know if you can turn off like the back bay? Do one, two, and three. One, do one, 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 two, numbers one, two, three. Or, or up on front, right line, up there. Yes. Oh, oh, one, two, three. Yeah. Oh, you have the numbers? Apparently, good, good girl. <laughs> I wouldn't even know that you can. So I teach GS120L, which is the International Pathway General Skills class. Um, been doing that for three years. I've been a teaching group leader for about a year, I think. And really love, I'm a graduate, an associate degree graduate of Brooks College uh, 150 years ago. <laughs> and, um, and BYU, Masters of BYU. I have three sons that I absolutely adore. The second one, uh, one is still in college. The second one graduated from here a few years ago. And the oldest is in business management, went through the Pathway program. So it's a, a very dear program to me and really great. I'll let my co-presenter introduce herself. Um, my name is Jen Williams. I also attended Bricks and got my associates here, then went on to you, which <laughs> was awesome, but oh, thank you. But people always go, that's not the most logical, but it, it was awesome. Um, I also teach GS 120L. I get the honor and distinction of being in Teresa's group, and I just have to make a little shameless plug for her. She's been an awesome TGL. She's been my TGL for the last three semesters, and can't say enough good things about her. Um, I live in Salt Lake area. I have five kids and a wonderful husband who teaches seminary. And one of my kids is here with me. Evan, do you want to raise your hand? <laughs> he's been my little buddy for the whole for the whole conference, and he's been so good. I'm so glad he came so that I didn't have to come up by my own. <coughs> so um, we're excited to present some things to you today. I don't know that all of it will be new information. In fact, I'm sure a lot of it will not be, but we're hoping to make it entertaining and helpful. We're going to do a little fun thing. You get movie popcorn. If you can guess the movie that aligns, we are both big fans <laughs> of movie lines. And so, <laughs> somebody's ready. <laughs> so, if you can guess the movie it's from, you, we're not going to tell you, here's a movie line. You just have to listen. And if you hear a familiar movie line and you guess the movie then first, then you get the movie popcorn. And we have lots. Here's a little example. You're killing me, Smalls. Who said it? Who said it? Yeah. First. Oh, Denise. Well, I pretty much do that once I get out. Yeah, she didn't raise her hand. You know what? We better raise our hands. <laughs> Okay, so you go. Yes, I'm next. Why don't you treat places with me? Okay, sounds good. All right, so, um, yeah. You're not right here. Okay. It's kind of funny to be technologically challenged in an online class, but that's where we're at. Okay, so let's it's just a Mac. That's all. <laughs> that's right, I'm just like, so. let's start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. I'm Who said sound of music? <laughs> the one in the last in the last row was the first one. The dark hair. Um, see, if nothing else, you're gonna leave entertained. That's <laughs> we're trying to add some entertainment value here. Um, there are quite a few reasons, you know, why we give feedback. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on this. Um, 
we all know that it's key to student improvement <coughs> from our mistakes. I found, as we were working on this, I found a great quote from a motivational speaker that says, feedback is the breakfast of champions. And I really like that. You know, we, of course, can't determine whether or not our students are going to take our feedback or use it or apply it. But if we supply that for them, that can really help them succeed, not only in our course, but in, but in life. So I really like that. Um, it's one of the, what, the best ways I can think of that we have to show our students care and loving in this online environment. Um, you know, that's something that we talk about a lot. How can we show our students that we love them? And feedback is a good way to do that. Um, and then Teresa is actually the one that pointed out in our outline of what teacher expectations are for our contract, it's expected that 25% of our contracted time will be spent on feedback. So that's another reason that it's so important. Um, so we talk about feedback a lot in um, WYU and in online teaching. And it reminds me of another something. You keep on using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. That's right. That is. <laughs> <laughs> These are all kind of gimmicks. I think it's all the time. Right. 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 Um, but obviously, obviously, we know that feedback is when two people have an interchange. <laughs> when two people have an interchange where one is letting the other know how they can improve behavior or outcomes. Um, so it does mean what we think it means, but um, I thought I'd just briefly touch on the etymology or the, the um, history of the word feedback. It started kind of in the 1920s at the advent of broadcasting. Of course, we know feedback was that hor horrific sound that came back from the microphone when the levels weren't right, when the volume was too loud. And of course, we don't want our feedback to be that loud, screeching noise. But even at that time, it was helpful to them that feedback helped them know what they needed to adjust and what levels they needed to change. And so. That's what we're all about when we give feedback to our students, is helping them know how to adjust and how to change so that they can do better in the course and, and in the future. Um, Mark Davidson, who is in our group, our teaching group, um, in a teaching group meeting, gave a really great um, definition of the word substantive. You know, we talk about this a lot, that our feedback should be substantive. And he said, it means that it's directly applicable to what they've contributed and specifically addresses how their submission has met the goals of the assignment, including a rubric when applicable. And so we should always make sure that we're giving feedback based on what they've contributed and showing them how it fits in with, with the rubric. So, not you. <laughs> Whatever method you choose to use, you'll want to think about these fundamental principles. And they're not really... They're more like guidelines than actual rules. It's those two really nasty pirates that, that take the girl. Yeah. And color pop it, oh, yeah. and they say, "Well, the more like guidelines, yeah. natural rules." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my principles. Well, I had a couple of principles as I was an elementary teacher that just taught me such great concepts, and one that they taught me and reinforced, and that I've also learned from educational research in my master's study is that the feedback it needs to be immediate, and in our guidelines or our actual rules it is given within two to seven days it needs to be specific we have to identify the specific error or, or area of weakness and then we need to let them know what it is that they have to do to correct that clear we I teach language students so I need to make sure that the vocabulary is at a level that they can understand um, brief they won't usually take the time to read or listen to a lengthy description again, based on international students that speak many different languages, but I think that that's kind of universally true. And I asked my son and daughter-in-law, who just graduated a few years, my daughter-in-law just graduated a few years ago from BYU Provo, and my son that's in the, my oldest son that's in the pathway <coughs> for, uh, in business management, I said, what do you think about feedback? And they were both like, it needs to be succinct, but we want it. We need it. We read it. And we don't, unfortunately, we don't have an idea about who reads it and who doesn't. Teresa. 
you'll be excited to hear this because I just went to the Brightspace class that they were training on. And in the new Brightspace um, program that we're going to be transitioning from island to, we have a way as instructors of knowing if they have viewed and read that feedback. I love it. I know. Can we get a hug? I love it. Because that is a request from a lot of instructors. So I couldn't help myself. I had to ask these two. That's, that's, that's wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, Denise, yeah. I feel like I say that to you like every day. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. So you can just read these. They're not comprehensive. They're just a few methods. But they're all good things. All good things. So one of the things they also talk about is that templates are going away. Oh, really? Oh, I'm just saying. Um, I actually heard yesterday from one of the people that are working on that there would be a, a way to use templates. Oh, did they fix that? Jessica? Oh, I just found a good way to do it. Well, it's my, it's my template junkie, and I have like 200 of them. Um, <laughs> Is I'm going to use an Excel sheet, a different sheet to lead a different lesson, and then I'll just have them. So yeah. I don't know if that's what it is. Yeah. Just copy paste. That are pulling yeah. out. I'm, I'm so sort of I'm so a little sad because I had like a whole system, system, so I never had to sort through the list. And it's oh well. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't cry. Well, I'm not sure what the details are on that, but when I was talking to them yesterday morning at the breakfast time, I said, "What about templates? What's the situation?" He said, "You will be able to use them in a different way, but it uh, facilitates that." So. I'm not sure where we are on that. Um, so all the things, all the things. Get them out of got the yeah. them somewhere. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 That's probably a really good idea. That is one thing that I've heard is that we should save them in the back. You will have access. They sat off. You have access to your previous course during the first semester of teaching, so you'll be able to to transfer. Right here. Is that the <laughs> yes, it is from Frozen. And she raised her hand. <laughs> she makes herself look like I'll be back to give you some popcorn. Wait, uh, yeah. Can <laughs> somebody say let it go? <laughs> All the things. All the things. All, All the things. things. You have to think a lot. Oh. Oh. Jessica, you're on. Oh, this is mine? Yeah, this is yours. Awesome. You can just speak from there or come stand up, whatever oh. you would like to do. <laughs> Jessica is also in our teaching group, and I borrowed a little piece of her feedback. And I don't know if you get my color coding up there, but the template is the orange kind of rust color, and then the green is what she inserted. At least I think that's what she inserted in the template that was personalized. And I really think that's a time saver. If you can use a template that addresses the assignment, and then if you can use a little bit of personalization, uh, this student, <laughs> I read some of his stuff. And he was not very nice. nice. <laughs> he was calling these other students' names. And <laughs> that's my first student ever that's been like one that I have to constantly be like, you can't say that. Jessica, <laughs> you did that so well. So just quickly run us through your little template um, idea. Well, I use a lot of templates, and part of it is just to save time. And a lot of my templates, a big one I do that for is the discussion board. I will always have a spot where I say, thanks for discussing, or I'm glad you talked about, or thanks for bringing up this example. And then I always put it personalized so that, um, and that's where I do it. And I like to do it in other ones too that are easy to do it. And at the bottom, I always will put, if they miss an answer or there's an issue with that, at the bottom, I always put what the, in bold, I'll put like the number, what they did wrong, so they're not on every answer what they did wrong. And on the vocabulary quiz, which I just started doing from advice from my teaching group, is where I really um, go through and do like a vocabulary or a grammar issue, and I do the original and then the corrected. Um, but I found, I don't know if everybody knows about like enrollment first, it's my best friend. And, <laughs> um, and that's actually your green there. That I'm just curious, raise your hand if you know what that's for. Is to personalize the address. Yeah, but I'd love to see it as end. I never even thought about. Like, yeah, I need to do the end first. Yeah, I need to like. Yeah, I love to do it. I need to know their names and twice at least. Yeah, that's nice. And I actually never go to the beginning, but then the niece suggests that, so I started always putting it at the beginning too. What it does is accesses the database. For those of you who haven't used it, it accesses the database of the student list, and then it puts their name in for you. Yeah, automatically it'll put their name in. I do have to go back now and change and put the name. You type it just names. exactly like is it on there. No, um, I'll do it first. I'll have some money side of the corner. 
I think I've got what's up here, Kira. Yes. Um, just so you know, Brightspace has the box you check that you say personalize my feedback. And it starts out by saying, Brett. Personalize my feedback. Brightspace does the same thing when you leave. It has a box where you type in your feedback. You check the box that says personalize it or something like that. I forget what it says, but but then it puts in their name. You won't see it. I've never done it. Yeah, so it now, this is a this is a different thing. But I've heard you can do this with the email you send out for Tyler too. It does that. I tried it out with my emails where I'm a test student, and it's so it says I'm only first place. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna move quickly. Thank you, Jessica, for your contribution. Okay. This is a. I took this offline. It was on the community, and this is from Courtney Aronoff. I don't know her, but I wrote her. And oh, she's not here, is she? <laughs> um, but I wrote her a message and I said, I really like what you said, can I use it? And um, no one's allowed to go away feeling guilty that you're not doing a screencast for every English paper. But I did think this was a really interesting thing that she does, a couple of interesting things. So if you just want to read through that, I'm, I'm a little bit old school, but I'm fairly technology capable. But I wanted to have a handout so you'd have this. And I, I really, really hope that you will access the information here and the links that we have here online. Everything, you know, is digitally offered to you after the conference is over. So I hope that you'll pick up this information and take another look at it. But she had some really great ideas about uh, breaking up the text in things that she's writing to students. Also that she uses a gene screen task. I know someone else who does that. And... Um, <clears throat> Let's see. She puts things that she learns online into her notes, into her announcements. And then this is the same thing as up here that she chunks by breaking things up using colors, bolding, italicizing. We don't want it to look like a, a neon yeah. line. My teachers, and she does a great job not only in the feedback, but she's, mm -hmm. you, know, you won't feel guilty if you see her <laughs> Screencast for every single major. Okay, don't send me anything, Jason. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> One thing she also does really well, I think, she, she um, gives out suggestions beforehand. <coughs> so I think that's good to minimize the, the corrective feedback afterwards. The way I got to this, I need to tell you that the way I got to her feedback was I went to my iLearn homepage. There's no place like home. And I, um, <laughs> <laughs> all the way in the back. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and that's how I got to the instructor development course. That's where I found this. Okay. So there was method in my movie line. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's all sorts of written feedback. We're just going to go through it really quickly because we're running out of time. Um, for those teaching L classes, tables and charts can be really helpful in showing grammatical mistakes. Um, sometimes we think of feedback just in the feedback box on an assignment, but there are a lot of other ways to give feedback in your announcements. You might give feedback in instructor notes, you might give feedback. Um, one thing I like to do is if I see, like what is it Jason said about giving feedback before so there's not as much corrective feedback, I like to give some um, feedback about like say for example, um, a couple weeks ago, I noticed this semester my students are not very verbose on the um, discussion boards, and so I have a lot of posts Wednesday night, and a lot of posts Saturday night, and very little in between. And one week I had two of my, actually my struggling students that don't speak English very well, but they'd gotten on very first thing Monday morning and posted on the discussion board. And so when I got on Monday to do my, um, I do emails and announcements a couple of times a week, I just mentioned that to the whole class. Um, just praised them in front of the whole class. I said, you know, I really love how Vanusa and Guillermo have already got on there with the discussions. When we, when we get on early, it really helps. By the end of that day, any guesses how many students are posted? <laughs> 15. <laughs> like, I think there was, I think by, it was, it was 15. It was 15, I believe. Of my students. I've heard you say this before, so. <laughs> yes, you have. So, um, sometimes by, by praising 
one or two students and what they're doing, it can really affect the way the whole class um, performs. And so I, I, I did this another time in um, another semester when um, my students, they just, they're, again, it was the discussions, they weren't very substantive, they were kind of posting that I agree and nothing major was going on. But I had one student that was always posting scriptures and how they applied to that lesson for the week, and he was just very, and so I, again, same thing in an email to the whole class, I said, I love how Dante just adds, you know, so much meaning to the discussion posts when he does this. And the same thing happened by the end of that week. I probably had at least half of my class that had added scriptures and analogies into their discussion posts. So I think that's a really great way to give feedback that's not necessarily to do with our grading, but it really does affect what happens in the course. Um, discussion boards, you can actually give feedback right there. Not that you're going to correct their grammar or give them negative feedback, but um, you know, I love how you applied this to, to what we're talking about this week, and, and that's really good. Um, and then we uh, rubric. Um, I love how we can, especially on the discussion boards, we can give our feedback right there by the rubric. I think that's really helpful. So, am I next still too? Ah, <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, Denise, you're famous. Um, <laughs> so you'll notice, <laughs> you'll notice we took from a lot of people, particularly from our teaching group, because we feel like, you know, two minds are better than one, and when we have a lot of minds, it's even better than that. But um, we we were glad that they didn't tell us no. We were afraid that they were going to tell us. Get your own, gosh! But they, they sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, um, <laughs> so um, I really like what Denise does in this, where she actually inserts the rubric right back into the feedback box. So, so you can see here what she does. I will highlight a few the areas that you missed, and then it kind of delineates for the student why they maybe didn't get the grade that they were hoping for, because she's put that rubric right back into their feedback box so that they can see. So this is awesome, Denise. This is a great idea. So is the blue um, ADA compliant? I, I just learned the other day that red is not. I don't know. Any ideas about that? So what? Red is not ADA compliant. You can't sure. use red because some people can't see can't see it. Um, I would guess that it has to do with color blindness. It does. So oh I'm God. sure that blue is not as, I mean, it seems like red. I, I, would, I would guess that it's all right. So that's good to know because I do use red because I think that it's like, you know, correcting in red. So that's really good to know. I haven't thought about that. Is there a highlight feature in the feedback? I can't remember if there's a highlight feature in the feedback. There is. There is a highlight feature. Yeah. Oh, the high, any of the highlight features was? Okay. Good to know. All right, um, and this is from Beverly Hayes, who's also in our group. Um, but you use this as well, right? You, you, from Beverly. Borrowed from right. Beverly. Okay. So she, um, as far as grammar corrections, and I know this doesn't apply to all of you, but for those of you who teach health classes, she'll give a whole um, table to the student. And also, you could use this class wide, of course, too. You know, in, in teacher notes or whatever, um, to show this is this is how you wrote it. This is the correct way to write it. Okay, oh, is it still me? Why? Okay. So we talked about how feedback is the breakfast. Oh, yeah, I'll jump in. No, you, no, 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 it's okay. Your knees okay. I'm, not, I'm great. I just blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we talked about how feedback is the breakfast of champions, and written feedback is first breakfast. But what about second breakfast? Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Yes, it is Lord of the Rings. But Sherry has popcorn, so I think we should give it to Seth because his hand was oh, pretty close to the same time. Okay. <laughs> Are you offended that you didn't get a second popcorn? No, the second breakfast? <laughs> Did you get a second breakfast? Um, so audio feedback is another great, oh, we're running out of time. Um, we have teachers that do a lot of different things. Um, including uh, grammar instruction, um, course introductions. I know Dana Romney um, reads her instructor notes aloud because she teaches an L class, and so it, it allows the students another opportunity to have English input and to hear um, spoken English. Um, in PowerPoints, uh, one thing that I like to do at least once a semester, sometimes twice if I can, is if they have a larger project, I like to give them their feedback in a screencast. And we're not going to watch the whole thing, but. Um, I just think it's really helpful for them to hear our voice and to see us. And so this was from last semester. 
Ooh, it's like I pull up. Here we go. So it's the uh, for those of you who teach the GS 120L, it's the assignment that they do on work. And um, this student opted to do a PowerPoint, and so I just went through his PowerPoint slide by slide and gave him feedback, both grammatical and just on his content. Oh, we don't have the audio clicked up. Did you hear that at all? As you often are, I don't know if you know that, but you're usually the first one to comment on the discussion board. You're often the first one to join the assignment. So thank you again for interjecting and working with us. Um, I thought it was a great PowerPoint. You had some great visuals. I liked and I thought your writing was really good. And it was great to learn about what you learned. So, I mean, I go through the whole PowerPoint slide by slide, giving him both grammatical and content feedback. But I think it's a really good way for our students to hear our voices. It makes it more personal. Um, and I've had a lot of students say how much this helps them um, and how much it means to them. And it helps me feel connected to my students. I don't know if you sometimes feel that, but I, I just, it really, really helps me feel connected to them. Another example would be um, if you're teaching like a math or, or that kind of a course to demonstrate the solution of a math problem with an audio, with audio on a whiteboard. Uh, I I don't, I, I don't pretend to know as much about business management as I'm acting like because I don't. <laughs> I don't. But I do know that my son has project-oriented assignments. So I think that kind of feedback probably would apply. How about nursing? What do you think about that? About project-oriented feedback? Uh -huh. Yeah, we have to give tons of feedback. I actually do audio feedback for the reflection journals, mm -hmm. and they love it. Mm -hmm. I always get like emails that say, oh, thanks so much for being so... Whatever, you know, they really like that. So. I think we're just, just yes, I do too. So we don't have time. We were gonna do a norming exercise, so you weren't uh, didn't feel mostly dead all day, but we decided that we don't have time for that. Yeah. Okay. And we don't have time to the group either. We were hoping to um, open it up for your ideas and maybe we just won't write them down, but does anyone have I'm sure there are tons of things that you've thought of or that you do that we haven't mentioned. Does anyone want to briefly share some things that you do? Yeah. I'm actually I'm actually taking a class right now. I teach and take classes. Oh, you're taking an online class? Yes, yeah, so and my instructor, um, Sister Call, as we call for the Proclamation Family class, she actually, in her responses, she will say thank you. Like last week, she said to me, thank you for your ideas about dating. Yes. If you're interested in more information, click here for an article about this. Wow. And she gives us links to other things. To so that encourages more learning. That's awesome. That's a great idea. Thank you. Any other ideas that you would just love to expose the world to? <laughs> Go ahead, Jessica. Oh, just one quick thing. Um, I know anyone who loves templates and has to spend an hour scrolling through them. Someone gave me the advice once, and what I do at the beginning of each week, I go into those ones, I edit them, and I write. I put a one at the beginning of each of the titles, right and then they're like right at the beginning. So I just go insert template, click. And so it's like, like I don't have to scroll for it. Perfect. That's so a great idea. FYI. That's a great idea. Any, any others? When it gets to our last, we, we end up like we're supposed to be done, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But that we're good. We're we're okay. almost done. We have some resources. Additional resources. If you haven't looked at the instructor development course, that is it OL two hundred. Um, there are some phenomenal resources for giving feedback Oops, as well as sorry about that. <laughs> That's my daughter in law um, Ramona Santa Claus. <laughs> so I would highly suggest that you that you look at that. And the online community too. Um, I know some of us we get so caught up in our own little teaching group community, but if you look at the greater online community, there are a lot of really good ideas. This is the piece that I would have liked to have printed, but um, going back to the digital life that we're leading now, the this is something that I would definitely like you to take hold of in the follow-up presentation because this tip on audio feedback and sandwich approach, finding instructor feedback, we always send that to our students first off the bat, and then sharing best practices. One of the things that we want you to know is that we know that your ways are not our ways and we just, our desire is to share ideas, but also for you to share back and to uh, be willing to try new things. We don't feel like you go your way and I'll go mine. 
No. <laughs> no. Okay. Of course, no. You go your way, as I'll go mine. Of course, that's happening. Oh. Okay. It's hello, Dolly. <laughs> Movie night at Teresa's house. <laughs> okay. You are enough. That was our point. That you, what you're doing is great. Uh, maybe add in one or two new ideas. And uh, Jen brought this idea in. Go ahead, Jen, and finish it up. Oh, yeah, I just like this thought from Sister Linda Burton. She says, um, I know he loved you when you were enough. He will bless you in this marvelous work because this is his work. And I know it's our job. I know it's a, it's a something that we do for money, but we know that it's still his work and these are his children that we're teaching and that he will bless, bless the work. And he's so pleased with the things that you're doing. And we just want you to remember there's no wrong way to see the reasons. Probably no wrong way to give feedback. Um, <laughs> But we hope that you'll continue to do the good work that you're doing and and bless the lives of your students. Thanks. Thank you.